All right, ladies and gents, I'm coming to you from the basement. And you can see we've got this wall behind us. Disregard that. We have some really nice paint. We're going to paint down here. Because nobody's ever really used this basement for anything other than storage. But anyway, the subject of this video is the fact that this basement gets kind of cold. And it messes with my 3D prints. So, to remedy this, I got an enclosure. And I had no idea it was actually a Creelty branded enclosure because Amazon made it seem pretty generic. But it's supposed to be made out of some aluminum foil fabric that's designed to melt instead of catch fire in case the 3D printer goes into thermal runaway. So what I'm going to do now is get this thing set up. And if I run into any snags that may help people that are trying to set this thing up, I'll let y'all know. But hopefully by the end of this, there's going to be an enclosure here to help hold in some of the heat and help my prints come out better. All right, here's what you end up with besides my laptop. Okay, um, here's the fabric and the instructions. It's got a series of poles labeled one, two, and three. And you can see from the instructions that down one side is ones, the other side is twos, and then the tall part is the threes. And then it looks like you pull the fabric on with the unit upside down, uh, kind of like you're pulling on a shirt. And then here's these 45 degree connectors that go in all the corners. Honestly, this don't look like it's going to be too complicated. But uh, that's some famous last words, so let's see how far I can get before I screw something up. Alright guys, we need to take a time out. Now you're about to hear me say in the next clip to ignore what I just said, and that's because I had filmed this segment where I was showing you how to put the rods together. But what I was doing was wrong, and that's because there's actually two types of each one of the rods. So there is... Uh, two bags of rod one, two bags of rod two, and two bags of rod three. One bag has the rod with the uh, little metal peg. The other bag has a rod with a hole, and they're both labeled number one, or they're both labeled number two, or they're both labeled number three, but they're different. It would have been nice if it would have been 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, and so on, but it's not like that. So hopefully by me making that mistake and wasting about five minutes trying to figure out how to get those rods into one another, you guys will not make that mistake. Okay, so ignore what I just said because the other bag that's labeled one, these things have no tapered end and there's a little little hole that the little um, the little uh, springy pegs stick into so uh and that's fine that it's like this but there's nothing in these little instructions that would indicate that it makes sense though because now there's going to be a non-tapered end on each side which is what you would need so let's try this again okay so now i have one and they're both labeled one, and there's no indication that they're different. But here is a one with a hole and no tapered end. Here's a one with the tapered end and the little springy thing. And look at that. Oh, that's so much better. So much easier. So if only they would have disclosed this, then, you know, it would have made life a lot easier. But they're both just labeled one with no indication that they're different. Okay, so that's got all the ones together. Now the twos, and they're identical. They both have two on them. Uh, one will have a hole. The other one will have the springy peg. And I'm not going to show any more of this. I'll put the threes together exactly the same way. Whenever we get back, the one, twos, and threes will all be assembled. And we'll be putting them in the little 45 degree brackets. All right, so now I've got a big old pile of one, two, and three 
rods that are put together and i'm going to keep it very very simple and here are my first two 45 degree connectors i'm going to start by putting twos between this and then building out just like you see here and get the bottom frame going and then build up now i don't have a lot of my filming equipment here in the basement and i'm doing this on my phone so you're not going to get to watch me do the whole thing i'll just stop and show you as I get to various steps. And now Boots the cat is going to assist. Hi, Booty. He's the most loving cat that I've ever seen. All right, so I've got both sets of the 2-2 um the one one two two top and bottom and these babies in the middle here are the threes so now i'm just gonna plug these in the top and then next time you see it it should look like a cube it barely fits on my table but it does fit so yay all right so i got her together and honestly once you get everything shoved in I gotta tell you, it's, it's a lot more solid than I ever thought it would have been. Um, where I'm doing this by myself, I just grabbed the bottom here and pushed it all the way up against the wall on each corner until I felt it give and go in. And then I did the same on the top and bottom. I just grabbed right here and pushed and it went down. So, and then once they're all in place, it seems... Uh, as level as the table and it's really sturdy so um so far i'm impressed now let me see if i can put its clothes on okay so i must be a doofus i could not really do it by their instructions but here's what i figured out unzip everything and what you see up here is uh all the way back because i got it folded back behind itself the clear panel that represents the front so wherever the front of your printer is going to be lay it down like that so this is the front lip okay and now what i'm going to do is set the cage down inside of it and this will be the back of your printer and here's this nice little hole for your power cord and see it's even got a little cinch so you can really cinch it up and cut off the oxygen so it won't burst into flames if something goes wrong. Okay, so I finally got it. This is very, very tight, which is good because it is going to give structural rigidity. And a few things that I will clue you in on that weren't necessarily clear from the directions... And for all I know, I'm just a ding-dong. But for one thing, make sure that the back side and conversely the front side with the flap is going over a two rod. Because remember how we've got one, two, three. The one rods are a little longer and they're on the sides here. Okay, and then um get it on as even as possible all the way around that was the problem i had because if you're short on one side you are um you're going to be too long on the other side and i kept picking it up and rotating the whole cube and moving things around to pull out the slack okay um this thing is an absolute beast it's huge all right, which this is a wide angle lens. It doesn't really do it justice, but I can easily fit my whole shoulders and half my torso and stuff in it. Um, when I get the Soval in there, I'll give you a shot so you have an idea. Um, make sure another thing is your corners are going to sit perfectly in the sides here. And if you don't do that, then this ain't gonna work and also the top flap which i'll show you in just a second because i can't do it 
and hold this um, tripod with a phone on it. But the the top access hole has to be un velcroed, and it actually folds back and has a little velcro strip to keep it from putting any pressure whatsoever on the unit. All right, so now let me get it halfway zipped up. Okay, so I got it halfway zipped up. What I mean by that is, see the clear flap where you can see everything is hanging down in the front. Now, let me get out of this wide angle view. Oh, well, I guess I gotta stay in it. Okay, it's hanging down in the front. Um, and then here is the top access hatch I was telling you about. This is how you can change your filament and whatnot. And it folds back on itself. See, here's the Velcro that normally hooks in right here. And I can't, I've got the phone up. I can just kind of see it from the side. So I apologize for the angle. But this folds over and now it's Velcroed in place. So the whole idea is to keep air out of this thing. And personally, I feel like that they've done a really good job with that. Everything is sealed very, very well. Um, it, this would be better if it was on a slightly shorter table for a guy like me. Um, these zippers are not particularly high quality. So if you're having to put a lot of stress on the zipper to get it to go back and forth, you've done something wrong with your install. Okay, because see, I'm not having to pull hard at all. And whenever I was first putting it together, I thought maybe you had to crank on the zippers, but they're, you know, these are not the high quality Japanese zippers, right? They're totally generic, but I mean, they're fun. Let's go all the way down and around. And there we go. Okay, so, and I would do a totally backup shot but I am in a very tiny corner of the basement and really don't have a lot of room. So I can't do that for you, sorry, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, uh, getting that on was definitely an adventure. Um, I feel like this is made pretty well. There was a lot of, com there was a few complaints, not a lot, a few complaints on Amazon. And uh, you know, I feel like this thing's made pretty well, to be honest, you know. So now I just got to get the sew ball in there. So I'll be back with a shot of that. And here's the sew ball in the new home. <laughs> so you can tell how big it is simply because, you know, in here, there's so much room for me to get in here and work. The USB cable running over to the old laptop. There's a Velcro hatch right here. I just undid one corner of the flap, run it out, and seal it back down. The Velcro is really, really strong. Um, back here is where the power cord came through. And I'll cinch it up, because I guess that's how it's designed. And up top here is the top access hole. I have it sealed off. So it's just a matter of doing the Velcro, and that way I can get to the top of the filament if need be all right so there she is that gives you a sense of scale because if you've got a soval svo1 you pretty well know okay final thoughts on the this cruelty um 3d printer enclosure it's well worth the money there's no way i could have made something with this much fit and finish and the foil fabric, because I don't even know how to, to um, source something like that. I can't sew. <laughs> so, um, and I leveled my bed with the printer in there. There's plenty of room to work in. Uh, it's very easy to to get the sew ball in and out. Right now, I'm preheating, getting ready to uh, getting ready to print something. So, um, hopefully, it works out better in this cold basement so um i'll do a follow-up in a little bit and let you know how it went